Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing the weekly reading for the sign of Leo. This is going to cover June 24th to July 1st. And we're going to get right into it, Leo, and get your two cards out and see what they're hitting for. What's going on with my Leos today? This is the last week of June. We're well into the getting ready to swing into the summer. going to be hot all over the country, in the U.S. anyway, which is where I'm based. So, um, those of you in England should be getting a little bit warmer. <laughs> oh, I did spend six years in England, so I know what an English summer is like. They don't get as hot as we do, but it's nice. So... Let's get right into it, Leo. Let's see what your energies are for this coming week. What are the two cards coming out? Your first card, Leo, is very soon. Interesting. And finances and career. All right, Leo. Finances and career. And very soon. So this could mean all kinds of combinations, right? Could mean anything, right? And I often find that our the Romance Angel cards don't really get clarified until we get right into the reading. So let's get your seven cards out and see what's going on with these two cards. Give me a clear picture for our lovely Leos. Lions, strong, proud. Fierce fire signs this week, June 24th to July 1st. We want to get affirmation, reaffirmation, warning signs, anything to look out for, energies to move toward or away from, anything to do with the main dynamic or relationship this week that's going to be going on for them, whether that relationship is romantic or professional. We'll see. But whatever that dynamic is, we want to get a clear picture for the Leos that are going to be tuning into this video so that we can get them something, a message that resonates with their life as it is today. Show me. All right. So, Leo, your first card is Empress. Wow. All right. This just came out for the last uh, reading, which was Cancer. Um, unbelievably so, because there's, I've spent a half an hour of shuffling in between. But here we are. We've got Empress. And there you are, Leo, showing up in your own reading. The Death card. And Ace of Swords. Beautiful. Your person has Seven of Cups. Six of Cups. And five of wands. Interesting. At the bottom you have heartache. Right? Sorrow. Three of swords. Talking about having relationships or interactions with people where you feel like you've been duped. Perhaps a little bit. They've lied to you. You've been deceived or manipulated in some kind of way. Right, Leo? Certainly a blow to your pride. But right now, you're feeling beautiful. You're in your empress. You feel gorgeous right now. Again, just like Cancer got empress right now. Empress energy is beautiful. It's you've, you're luxuriating, right? You're starting to live your best life. Could be that abundance is starting to come in. Um, there starts to be signs of being able to live a new kind of more prosperous life, a happier life, you know? You just feel very confident. Um... You're not at the beck and call of anyone. I mean, the empress, the only person she answers to is the emperor, you know? So, you don't, you know, there's no one you have to answer to. You are the, you know, you are the queen of your world, right? You are the empress of your world right now. Um, and so when an empress has an emperor, yes, she's she has to, an, you know, that's the only one she really answers to, chooses to answer to. But when she doesn't, she is top dog in her world, you know? And she doesn't allow anything in her garden or close to her that could besmirch her. 
Besmirch all the good work and hard work she's done on herself and on her person. All right, so you just feel great. Here you are showing up in your own reading. Strength card, eight. Eight talks about boundaries, strengths, and weaknesses. Knowing our own strengths and weaknesses. Knowing our limits, you know, where we're best, where we do best in playing to those we, uh, strengths, right? Um, where we are weak, perhaps with low vibrational thinking, being jealous, being envious, prideful, egotistical. Those are all low vibrational energies that come out of weakness, not strength. They come out of a lack of self-esteem or self-confidence. So they actually, they're actually considered weaker, um, a weakness, you know. It's a weakness to to indulge in that type of feeling or behavior is a weakness. It's not a strength, and so <clears throat> dealing with with those kind of carnal, kind of baser emotions is what is uh, you know that's the nature of getting stronger. That's the nature of evolving. Certainly, as a Leo, who is naturally very passionate anyway, very prideful. So yeah, you're coming. You're coming into your own reading because, like I said, you're the Empress right now. You feel great. You feel exactly like yourself. You feel strong. You feel your Leo energy coursing through you right now. This could be for those of you who aren't Leos. If you've got a Moon in Leo or a Leo rising, you're feeling your Leo very strongly right now. Okay, you're feeling that forward momentum, that fieriness, that internal strength, that confidence, um, um, healthy pride. And there's a death right now coming in terms of how you see your relationships, right? Certainly how you see a relationship with this other person. Um, there's a change happening, a transformation. So whomever it is that is part of this main dynamic that's taking center stage this week, there's going to be a change in that dynamic. Something is going to shift, transform. It's going to be very different. Could be someone that you normally don't feel quite romantic toward, but maybe you will begin to start feeling more romantic or more loving towards that person. Um, it could be that, you know, it's a friend who suddenly becomes a lover, right? But there is some kind of transformation that happens in connection with this person. And the new relationship that comes out of it is quite a revelation for you. It's quite, it's something altogether new for you. It feels good. It feels like a sense of victory. It feels like you've landed on your feet, but it is certainly new. It's a different kind of relationship than you're used to. Um, it certainly feels exciting and dynamic. It feels like you're perhaps matched intellectually. And this is perhaps, you know, something that for you, Leo, you know, it's like, <clears throat> I don't know. It's almost like a sense of pride that this relationship has kind of come together in a way, right? You feel like this person is, you know, just as, you know, is equal. You're equal mentally and emotionally, you know, so you feel like. You've kind of met your Bonnie or your Clyde in a way, right? Um, but certainly this week, it's interesting, there's going to be a shift. And for it to be very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now is what is about, you know, that's the message of this um, Oracle card very soon. So I think that that is also like this week, there's going to come a question in about this relationship and what do you really want, you know? Things are changing could be that their feelings towards you are changing and it's causing you to have to now uh, respond. So let's see what, you know, their cards are, they're feeling very much like a possibility is here with you. There could be multiple, you know, they're feeling very daydreamy right now. Like, hmm, you know, uh, like there's a lot of options for romance, right? There's a lot of options um, coming into their life right now. They see themselves as having a lot of options right now, certainly when it comes to relationships, right? Now, this could be that uh, it's not so much that they have options, but it's like they're kind of feeling right now as if they have the possibility of making some of their dreams come true, right? So it could be that they see in you, certainly, and I believe it's because they see it in you because there's, I'm looking ahead now and they see you as the Six of Cups. So they certainly see that with you, 
they may actually be able to accomplish some of the things they've always wanted to accomplish. Do you know what I mean? Like you are the right person for them to be able to move their their goals forward, right? I almost feel like perhaps they've been quite stagnated for quite some time because they haven't really found the right mate. And I think they're seeing that you could possibly be the right mate. This seems to be quite an interesting dynamic. I almost feel as if this is very much a slow burning relationship that's only just now finally changing. But it's been going on for quite some time and it's almost been a very slow kind of drip, drip, drip or slow kind of being pulled together or falling in love. Maybe a friendship that, you know, just as you slowly spend more and more and more time together, suddenly other kind of, you start to imagine other possibilities with each other further than just a friendship. They certainly see a possibility of having a really long, like enduring uh, relationship with you, a happy relationship with you. This seems to be the kind of possible relationship that develops out of a good friendship. And it's like one of the most healthy kind. It's like, you know, it's the kind that, you know, you've always been friends and now you realize that, you know, you possibly are love each other and could be in, and, and because you started off as friends and good friends and probably have gone through a lot together as friends that it's built a really nice sturdy foundation for which to go forward they do however feel as though they have to compete there's something going on in this relationship five of wands there's a struggle there's a power struggle going on somewhere um and it could be that because you guys haven't quite cemented this relationship perhaps you're dating or you're seeing other people or perhaps they just see you as having other opportunities there seems to be a little uh there seems to be a sense of discord a little bit of bickering there could be a little bit of like you know them feeling as though they have to one up somebody else they may begin to act a little bit like um where before you know, okay, like this is say, like say this is your scenario, right? This is your friend, and where before you and your friend are out, and that person was always cool with you, right? You guys were always cool together. Now, when you're going out, it can be that they now suddenly you see them getting a little jealous when they used to not be jealous. You can see them getting a little aggravated with people who are who are like paying you kind of like sexual attention or physical attention, where before they didn't act like that now they're feeling now you're starting to get the sense that their hairs you know they're getting their hackles up they're getting irritated they're arguing with people around you people who are speaking to you they're arguing with them a little bit more bickering a bit more in a petty way and it's almost like you're thinking you're looking like what what are you doing like are you seriously getting jealous and they probably are i think they i think they are you know, I think they are. I think they're just getting, they're starting to get into their feelings a little bit, you know. And it may be that you have to have this conversation. Swords also talks about conversation. So when this chance, this relationship shift happens, it could be also that from your point of view, Leo, you really need to have a conversation with them so that, like, remember, clearly decide what you want. A lot of that is going to be about communication because if you're friends, then, you know what I mean, you have to have communication with them, especially since... If you both know there's been something going on that's shifted and now they're acting a little funny, you have to address it. Give me some deeper insight on this Leo reading, please. I don't know what's going on here. Just a little bit deeper for this week, June 24th, July 1st for our Leos. Show me. This is a really cute love affair, Leos. Um, I, I feel really cute, kind of innocent energy. I think that they were around for this heartache that you had before. I don't think that this involved this person. This was before them or this was during your friendship with them. And it can be also that they helped you through this period as well. So they very much know and understand what you've been through before. Wheel is turning, yeah. Seven of Wands, Ten of Wands. Nine of Wands, a lot of passion, Ace of Swords coming in again. So there's your communication. And then Eight of Cups. 
So bottom of the deck, you have King of Swords. So yeah, this person is a great communicator. They're like your, they're like your confidant. They've been your kind of like protector as far as your friend is concerned. As a friend, they've been your, they've been your King of Swords. They've been your protector. They've come in to help you when you need it, especially when you went through this breakup, right? And you know they were very good friend to you in this way. You know, always respectful. You know, never taking advantage of your situation but always like you know just simply being a good friend being a steadfast friend you know being there when you needed somebody to be practical and logical and help you get through your feelings right so yeah you certainly feel the wheel of fortune is turning for you because right now so many great things are coming in this could have a lot to do with the finance and career you feeling really good right now and financial issues do factor in your love life because whenever we Whenever our abundance increases, our self-confidence increases, our ability to do more things in life increases. You know, it's a you know, it's ridiculous to think that we don't need money or we don't need to take care of the of the of the material plane in our lives, right? It is necessary, you know, that's the world we live in. And so opportunities are certainly coming in for you right now and um I think that you feel very mature, you feel mature enough to handle them, you know, you're feeling very discerning right now, you know, you're setting up the right kind of boundaries to understand which opportunities to take and which opportunities aren't so good for you, you know, you're just being very mature and very, like, responsible, certainly with your finances right now. As far as the relationship is concerned, Seven of Wands, yeah, you do kind of feel like there's been this change and now it almost seems as though, like, you know, there's a little bit of like defensiveness, you know, there's a little bit of feeling like um, everything is changing so quickly. You almost want, you know, you're almost a little bit nervous, Leo, because you almost want to hold on to the friendship. You're kind of ready to make a stand for the friendship because you're kind of nervous about what this change is bringing, but you feel there's a change coming and it just can't be helped. There's something happening between you two and it's just like something... You know, when feelings change, it's not like they you do it on purpose. It just happens. So the death and the, or the transformation is going to come in, but I do think that you're fighting it a little bit. You know, I think you're like trying to ignore it a little bit. Your partner knows it's there. Your partner, your your person is certainly aware of what's going on, but you're the one, you're, you know, in the beginning, you're going to be kind of like ignoring the signs a little bit. You know, maybe pretending you don't notice that they're getting jealous because you don't want to acknowledge the behavior because you're trying to hold on to the friendship, you know. But eventually what will happen is once this communication comes in, you'll be able to lay down all that baggage. Ten of Wands will come in, which is the end of a cycle and a stage. A long stage of holding on to certain kind of like uh, hang-ups, baggage, you know, certain... Uh, um, I want to say traumas, you know, letting them affect you, you know, it's just the end of that. You're ready to lay down the things that used to cause you a lot of, uh, that were burdensome to you in the past, right? And so I think a lot of the things that's bothering you about what's happening here in this relationship, you're going to be able to deal with them, like I said, once you have this conversation, right? Right now, you're still holding on to a lot of kind of anxiety about what's happening. You're not really sure. And of course, like I said, you know, as soon as the conversation comes, though, you're going to understand and be able to go to the next stage and it won't be nearly as scary as you thought it was your person is certainly thinking about nine of wands yeah they're thinking, they're thinking about you know um this last little hurdle you know they're looking back on their lives and and they're realizing you know the mistakes that they've made maybe in their lives and i think you know, they're finding themselves realizing that they don't want to let something good slip through their fingers. They don't want to let the possibility of, like, their dreams coming true with you slip through their fingers. They're reevaluating the long road that they've been on, that they've been on alone. Nine is the number of being solitary and alone, nine being the hermit. So Nine of Wands talks about, you know, looking back on your life and, you know, and making, you know, and realizing that you... <clears throat> It's kind of looking back on all the little battles, all the little trials, all the little tribulations, all the little heartaches that you've had, how you've survived them, right? You recognize that you've survived them, but you also recognize that right now you are kind of, you're still on your own. And you just need to make that last kind of leap, you know, to get through this and get to a place where you can be together with someone, right? To get through this, to get over this last little bit so that you can be a wholesome person 
and bring somebody in. You know, you don't want to be on your alone. You want to complete this cycle because this has been a solitary journey. You know, as in a way, and in many ways, it's been a solitary journey. Even if your person had relationships along the way, they weren't very fulfilling. And so now they're realizing that they do need to make this last little leap and try to, and I think they're trying to take advantage as well of the opportunity that they see they have with you. They don't want to let you slip through their fingers or the possibility of a relationship. Here's the Ace of Swords coming through again. They feel the same way you do in terms of, um, even though right now you may be feeling a little bit like you don't want to admit to it, but they understand just as you do that ultimately it's going to have to be a conversation that you have. You guys are just going to have to talk about it. You're going to have to talk about your relationship, how it's changed and how you both feel, you know, and see where it goes from there. If you truly were friends for quite some time, then you owe that to each other. And then you can come out of that without the worry of losing your friendship. Often you lose friendships with people when the communication breaks down. When one, when either one or both are too afraid to talk to each other or acknowledge their feelings because they're too afraid to either be um, denied or to be, uh, you know, to be in some way, um, what's the word, you know, uh, gosh, I, it, I'm tongue tied, but it's like, you know, when somebody doesn't reciprocate the feelings, you know, the feeling of, 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 you know, of being let down, the feeling of letting, telling somebody how you feel and then they don't reciprocate it. You know, they refuse you or they refuse to acknowledge that they feel the same way or anything. And it's the fear of that that oftentimes can stop people from having the very necessary conversations that they need to have, which would ultimately save their friendship or their relationship in either case. You know what I mean? If the love isn't there, they can at least save their friendship by having the conversation. And here I'm, and here with the Eight of Cups uh, clarifying this like attitude that you've noticed from them. Um, yeah, they they're really very much not wanting to go back to kind of the type, you know, the empty relationships that they might have had before, and they're very much feeling like they need to work, they need to fight for this relationship. They're willing to fight for this. They're not willing to kind of just let it go, you know. They they know that this is a relationship that's going to give them more than 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 what they've had before and they've made a commitment to wanting more eight like i said talks about boundaries but it also talks about discipline and and understanding you know what your limits are and understanding what restrictions you need to put in place to achieve your focus right to achieve your goals so you know they're very much willing to be disciplined or be restricted in any way they need to be to prove to you that this is what they want. They're willing to fight for it. Very interesting, Leo. This is really very much about you and if you want to have this as well. But yeah, you need to decide very soon because this person will either be here for you or, you're, or it's going to slip through your fingers. And you may not realize until later that ultimately this is the person you wanted to be with as well. All right, Leo, I'm going to call it. This is your weekly reading from June 24th to July 1st. If it resonated with you, you know what you got to do. Like and subscribe, hit the bell and all of that good stuff. If you want to get a private reading schedule, just follow the link that's at the bottom of the video. But for right now, I'm just going to tell you, Leos, I love you so much. Have a wonderful last week of June. Bye-bye.